Hi, I'm Crystal. And this is Gunner. Okay. I've, I've been in previous lives. Yes, you have. Um, I'm an educator here at the Red Deer Museum and Art Gallery. And uh, you can follow us or find us and more direction for this on the blog. Uh, we are also on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So you can find us in all those places. And then if you want more information on the project we did today or a little bit more detailed instructions, you can go there and find it. Uh, anyway, so we will jump right into this because this is um, kind of a multi-step project. Sorry, I'm just gonna, here's the finished one. Okay, so I called this, uh, are your flowers out? So we're gonna start by making this background in watercolor paper, and then we're gonna start by making these fantastic little flowers. Okay, so uh, I like to set everything up on my right, just cause I'm right-handed. However, so that you guys can both see what Gunner and I am doing. Here, I'll put that a little bit more forward. I will be sharing uh, with Gunner today. So we have our tub of water, we have some um, paper towel, our big brushes, and some watercolor. We're going to start with a wet on wet technique. So what we want to do, and Gunnar, you can do this too. So wet on wet is basically we're going to wet, means we're going to wet our paper and then we're going to add uh, the watercolor to it. And you'll see it's going to kind of spread out for us. So I'm going to... You just paint your page with water. Yeah. And I want to have a couple of uh, clouds, so I am not going to put water everywhere. And then what will happen is when I put the blue next to it, the clouds will, um, or the areas that I left dry, will not have water run into it. Okay, so now I'm going to take some blue. I took some, I made sure that my brush was wet. And then I'm making a little puddle on the lid. The palette lid is fantastic for um, for mixing different colors in, or even just making puddles of paint. So if you look at what I'm doing, so I'm going over top of it with the wet paint, and you can see how it's kind of spreading out. It's cool, huh? It spreads out like that. Yeah, it. It is. So I'm just putting my finger down because the paper was kind of buckling a little bit. And I also wanted to see where I left it dry because I don't want to go over top of that because it will actually stop. See how the the watercolor is not spreading into that area? Yeah. And that, yeah, see? And it's because um, the paper is dry. You actually got to get the paint all over that area. Yeah. And so by push, taking my finger and pushing it, pushing the paper down, I can see a little bit better where the dry stuff is and help with the buckling. With that being said, we also could have used green painter's tape and, um, okay, Gunnar, you want to be careful because you're using a little bit too much water, okay? That's why you have your paper towel here. So if you get too much water on your um, brush, yes, then you can dab it off. Because we would like this to dry sometime today so that we can use it. Actually, ideally this morning so that we can use it. Okay, so, yeah, you can, you want to just spread it around a little bit more. And then you, you want to turn your page because this is going to be our clouds. Yeah. I am also going to, uh, there's only one blue in this, but I can make it a little darker. So the proper way to deal with watercolor is to actually um, do it in layers. A lot of people just want to grab more paint because they think that if they add more paint, it's just going to make things more vibrant. It will, however, Watercolor won't dry properly then. Uh, the pigment that is used for the, the paint colors, a lot of times uh, is 
you use a binder of some sort. Some use honey, like some, like M. Graham is a brand. They use honey to bind it, um, or it's called gum Arabic. It comes from this, this tree. Anyway, it's stick, sticky, like sap. So if you just try to add more paint, it's not going to dry on you. So what you want to do is do one layer, let that dry or almost dry, and then you can go back in and add another layer. And that is how you get the colors deeper and more vibrant. So what you're saying is if you just grab more paint, it won't dry right. That's right. So I realized that I needed, I wanted to go down a little bit further with my sky. So you can actually see where I added more water and it's kind of pulling all that watercolor down that I already painted above it. I already think my sky is big enough. Okay. So are you going to add some um, grass at the bottom? Sure. Okay. I'll do some strips of green. Okay. So yeah, How do you think swish. I should do it? On the side or full brush? Oh. Well, here's the thing, Gunner. And at the end of the day, it is your artwork. Um, but the project that we're doing, we're not as in, we're not as concerned about how the background looks because we are going to put flowers and a, a vase on it. Uh, but if you want to play around with how you do the grass, then go for it. If you want to try it on the side, have that. Or so I'm going to make it wet down here again. But I'm leaving a little bit right here because I don't really want the blue to run into my green. So I don't know, I think you guys can see it right along here. I've left it dry. <clears throat> and now I'm going to grab some green for my grass. And I am going to go up a little bit higher, but I, I don't want it, like I said, I don't want it to bleed or we call it when the water color runs into another area that's wet, we call that, some people call it bleeding. That's one of the terms for it because that's kind of what it looks like how, well, we don't need to get into that because that's kind of gross, but it's called bleeding. <laughs> I feel a little bit frazzled today. Haven't been here for a couple weeks. Because my class had a COVID outrage. <laughs> there was like six different cases. Actually, there was more than that. However, yes, Gunnar had been in quarantine and now he is out. And last week it had been Saya. So, okay. So I am going to go now a little bit higher. Oh, see, it's starting to kind of go in together, which is okay. I did definitely play around with my grass. Yeah, you sure did. It's like everywhere. We can't fully see yours. You want to just pull it closer this way? See if you look on screen, you can see how close it is. What well, notes? Yeah. Okay. Put it down. You just pull it closer here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do. Well, the sign right there, it's actually blocking the grass. Well, yes, but people need to know what they're doing today. All right. Now that I've done that, I am going to move my watercolor paper off to the side and let it dry a bit. And then we're going to start making some flowers for the project. So if you can, you always want to tidy up your space a little bit just so that you have uh, more places to work. I don't know. My husband always bugs me that I'm like a goldfish and I grow to fit my surroundings. So I constantly, yeah, this whole table. <laughs> is very full right now. So I'm going to just move some stuff off to the side so that we can have more space. I'm just drying off the lid of this watercolor. So another thing too is if you swish your paintbrush all the time in between colors, I don't know, you can probably see here, like where Gunnar and I use blue and green, there's still pure green and pure blue. And that's because we had clean brushes when we went into it. I accidentally just uh, pushed some blue onto that one. So I'm going to take that off. All right. So this comes off to the side. Here. 
Okay, so I got us some heavy, heavier uh, patterned sketchbook paper to use. Sorry, I'm just gonna take a drink here. Glue gun. <laughs> yes, I do have a glue gun out as well. We're not using that right now. Okay, so what you wanna do is with your heavier pattern paper, so you can cut initially or just get yourself, oh, this is really shiny, sorry, <laughs> like squirrel. Okay, so I've got this and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start ripping in like kind of a circular manner just so that I can make it, well, I'm trying to make a flower but it's not gonna be like a realistic looking flower. We're taking some artistic liberties with this. So here I have ripped up this circle. And then it's like, what do I want for the center now? Got my circle. Good job. Okay, we're gonna put that down. And then... I want some of this paper. I know, it's pretty cool, eh? It's like crazy cool. Okay. It, there's a bunch of triangles. Yes, okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to rip a smaller circle out for my center. And this might be too vibrant of a color, but that's okay. So I did this smaller one, that's gonna be the center of this flower. So I'm gonna take my glue stick and I'm gonna glue that and I'm just gonna leave it up to dry and I'm gonna make a few more flowers to go in that area. So I'm gonna put it up here so you guys can still see. Uh, I got my small trip again. Okay. And I'm gonna make various sizes of this easy round flower. So I'm going to make another one. Okay. And like I said, I'm just uh, ripping. And it's nice if you have the slightly thicker um, pattern paper, purely because it then it, it has these nice edges when you rip. And that's too shiny and you can't fully see. My paper. So there's another one. And I'm gonna make another little little guy. You can go ahead and make as many of these as you want. Uh, I quite enjoyed this when I initially made this project. Are you gonna make, a, oh, is that gonna be your center? And I had my youngest, Gus, uh, he was in there ripping paper with me the one day when I did the, the initial demo. I think he was on one of the lives, actually. He was on one of the lives, yes. Which one was it again? Uh, I don't know. I have to look. It was definitely one to, uh, to do with bugs. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I am ripping another one. And I think you've only done one. I've done one, two, three, and this will be my third one. Of what? Flowers, look, I made three oh, flowers. Oh no, the bugs. Oh yeah. Oh no, 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 that was, um, you're thinking of the gilded magnets that say I had done. Uh, Gus and I work, we're working on them one day at home. Uh, Gunner has as well. We just haven't finished it. And actually, this week, um, for Mini Mag, so that's when uh, art geared more towards like the three to five year old set, uh, Heather had this fantastic, it was called um, BD Fish Mobile. So I had both boys and um, myself who were making these mobiles and then they Mobiles. made- Mobiles. Ah, oh, yes, it has to be so particular. Oh. The the back side of this paper, it's all it's all sunsetty. Yeah, it sure is. Cause yeah, the back side. Anyway, so yes, I made one for we made one for my mom, and then we made one for their nana, who is uh, my husband's 
um, mother. And then I'm going to make another one because they have a kokum as well. So that's my dad's um, wife. So it's their step grandmother. And so I thought all the grandmothers could have these fish mobiles because they look fantastic. All right. Okay. So I'm going to make now slightly bigger flower. Oh, I knew I had grabbed myself some purple because you guys all know me in purple. Yeah, you go crazy with purple. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some petals this time. So I'm going to, I'm just ripping up some paper here and now I'm going to start making um, just kind of a curved petal shape. But like I said, it's not supposed to be a realistic looking petal or a realistic looking flower. So we can just kind of use our imaginations to make what we think a petal would look like. Okay, so I'm making I... another center. Okay. This center kind of looks like an eye. It does, yeah. So on Mother's Day, I always go for, I was trying to figure out for how long now it's been well over 15 years. My mom and I always go to different greenhouses and we get plants and it was kind of strange this year because we are, we're moving. My mom's moving and litter paper. We're going to actually use that for our, um, the bottom for the vase. So you just want to hold off on that one. Ah, I really was looking forward to using that Well, you one. will get to use some of it. Well, if you want to use this for the vase as well, you can. If you want to use some of the glitter, that's fine too. Okay, so I have these four little pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these together. And then I'm actually going to make more petals to go in the center. Petal shape one. Yep. You gonna flip it over so we can see what pattern you chose? Mystery pattern. I chose this. They can't see it. You gotta go under there and look. I chose this um, airy pattern. Oh yes, it is. Okay, and the cool thing. So what this this paper that I grabbed, the other side has some completely different. So that's what I'm gonna use for the smaller interior petals of mine. So yeah, so uh, my mom is moving and we will be moving. To her old house. She's building her very own new house. Yes. So that is what we are doing. We are purchasing my mom's old house and my mom is building a new one. But anyway, so since she will be moving soon, like next month, and we will be moving shortly after, it's like we don't want to get as many plants. And also... We've st also started packing. Yes, I found this thing online about talking about how you should start packing up um, six to eight weeks in advance and to do a box every day. So we're going to get some more boxes today. So yeah, I we did buy a few, a few plants because I do want to have um, some stuff in the front and the back to look nice for prospective buyers. And I always did like gardening and so has, so did my mom. And also we, because we, we did pack a little yesterday, we had these boxes um, because we bought these carts um, um, at Michael's the other, um, a couple days ago. And we had the leftover boxes to use. So we used them. Okay, so I'm putting this yellow piece in the center, and then I'm going to put one more. Uh, I'll take some of this brown, even smaller. How are you going to make a circle even smaller than that? <laughs> there. So I have made a different sort of flower. Oh. I grabbed something different by accident. Well, that's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna make one more flower and then we'll get going. Cause yeah, it's already been like 10 minutes. 
Actually, it's been we've been here. We've been doing this for twenty already. You mean getting these petals done? Well, we've already done. Oh, uh, well, no, we did. We were working on the the other part of it. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly make one more flower. Not that because I, but I think you guys kind of all get what we're doing. Gunner is taking my favorite purple. My mom's favorite color is definitely purple. Which I'm pretty sure, didn't you tell me the other day that it, yesterday it was lame? That purple was lame. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to glue some of these on now. that. Can you pass that tree back? Wait. Can you pass that tree pattern paper? Which that one? arrow pattern? Oh, this one. Okay. Um, no, this one that I was using. Oh, where is it? This one? Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I'll just, okay. you know, this was my bad. I knew this project was going to take a little longer. Um, however, and then I was like, oh, I should have pre-prepped and made some of these, which I didn't. So that was my bad. Um, but that's okay. It's fine. Well, I've been feeling good lately. I was like, yeah, I'm like, we're starting to get this so that it's not as, um, isn't taking as long. It's one of those things I, I teach. Well, I haven't been lately, but I teach a group of women art lessons every week. And, uh, a lot of times I'll be like, oh yeah, we've, it's only been like an hour and the whole sudden it's like, oh, we've already been working like three. And it's like, yeah, that's when you're making art. Or actually I started getting, looking up quotes, like artist quotes. And I found this one for today. To say. Art is something <clears throat> that makes you breathe with a different kind of happiness, which I agree. Which I don't even know what that means. <laughs> well, when you make art, it makes you happy. Well, sometimes it doesn't make me happy. No. Sometimes. But you said when you make art, it makes you happy. It does. It always does. But sometimes for me, it doesn't. Okay. So there. Now I've got two flowers. I'm going to move along. And what we want to do next, and my piece of paper is more or less dry. Um, Gunner's isn't quite dry yet, but he's still working. Is I'm going to throw up, throw hey, up, that sounds terrible. Oh, sorry. Okay. So I'm going to put these flowers on here. And then I'm going to take some yarn so that I can have, um, stems for them and I totally this, think I now have enough flowers but this one kind of fell apart well you just need to use a little bit more glue um no it it stuck to the paper because I used too much ah. yeah this flower just fell apart you know I think I'm just gonna do three flowers so far. okay and that's okay uh we needed green for grass I think there was another color that I was going or not uh green for the petals but I don't think. I take. I definitely know which yarn I'm gonna use for the stem. I thought that I had green. Okay, 
So Gunner, can you go over there and just grab some green in that oh. open container? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yarn. So I'm going to grab some yarn here and then we can braid it or you can just use it as is. Got a page. And it's green? Page to green. Good job. Oh, here's glitter paper book. Gunner's also doing the same thing. Okay, so last time when I did this with the kids, awesome. Okay, can you, well, I had them hold it so that I could braid it. However, oh, oh the hot glue gun. I told you we need more glue. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put this on here and let it harden and then I can where are the glue sticks? Because I bet I could go grab one. They're in the... Okay. I'll be right back with an extra glue set. I feel like I was too unprepared today. And it keeps... We have tons of sticks. Uh-oh. Like, what did I you pass? Got, we have like 50. I feel like I'm slightly unprepared, and it says the mic is, is muted. This too big? And I'm not sure why. Nope. Nope, that one's perfect. So I'm just braiding this really quickly. And this is going to be my stem. Gotta be careful you don't burn yourself. Um. I've used glue guns before at my grandma's house, and I have burned myself a couple times. I don't doubt that. But I'm getting really good at it. I haven't burned myself in a long, long, long time. I de I'm also going to use that yarn. It looks super cool. Okay. So, what I'm going to do, though, Gunner... Uh-oh. Uh. Oh, keep going. Okay, sorry, it says there's no internet. Oh, okay, sorry, my bad. Okay, so I'm supposed to keep going. I'm just trying to finish this off so that you guys can see. You're starting to get the idea. So we have a flower here, we have a stem here, and now I'm just going to make, that's probably super loud, I'm going to make a few leaves, and then I can start putting them in there. I think that leaves a little big. Yeah, that's okay. We can have a little big leaf, that's not a big deal. You know, it's a good thing that we have Carly in the background, always fixing things and making it work for us. Okay. Hello. Keep your face down, please. Hello, stick. Okay, so do you, okay, so I did that. Yeah, this one might be a little big. I will cut this down. We can do that. Are you braiding the yarn? Yeah, I braided the yarn. Okay, so you don't, you, you know, this looks really cool by itself. Like we don't even need to have a vase if you want to do a vase. And actually for this one, I might not do a vase. I might just get the flowers on and have the stems and have the, the petals and we'd be good to go. You need, you haven't finished braiding. We'll do that. So with this one, I had done... A vase so if you want to go for it if not like I said I don't think I'm going to uh, I'm just gonna carry on gluing this on however you don't need to watch me do all that because that's like watching paint dry uh, so anyway this is are your flowers out so we got our wet on wet in the back we've got some ripped paper so it's totally a mixed media piece where we use multiple types of material to create our finished one and I think it looks really cool when it's done. And actually, I'm really excited to see how this one is. I love this yarn that I found here at work. 
Um, I might actually take some of this yarn home with me. Well, we'll have to see, okay? All right, so next week with Saya, we are going to be doing, um, and I don't have her example here, so I'm just gonna fold this over so you guys can see it. We're gonna be doing some printed patches. And I love that project of Saya's. Like when she does the printed patches, it's so fantastic. So it is, um, we, you end up with this really great patch that you can put, uh, you can sew it to something or take a safety pin and clip it to something, or you can hang, you can do whatever you want. But it is these really great do-it-yourself patches. Uh, we will have the um, materials and, not sorry, not the instructions. We'll have the materials online later today. Uh, and then if you want any more directions, check out the blog. Uh, and then if you want to rewatch this, then you can fast forward. You don't have to watch the whole thing. Anyway, it is on YouTube and Facebook. All right. So thank you guys for joining us, Gunnar and I, today as we made... Uh, Glue stick. Well, <laughs> as we made this project of uh, Are Your Flowers Out. So hope you tune in next week when you're with Saya. And I'm not sure who the surprise guest will be yet, but Saya will... Get your face. Bye. Face. Say we'll be here um, next week doing her do-it-yourself patches. So thank you guys, and I hope you have a great day. All right, bye.